let's draw something Christmassy. I want to show you how to draw a Christmas gnome. Now it's actually reasonably simple, I think, but very nice and effective. Probably the most complicated part of the drawing is the bid. So I'll particularly show you how I approached that. Before we get started, if you would like to draw this with me, it is available on my Patreon. And I have quite a lot of Christmassy tutorials in both color pencils and graphite. Each tutorial includes really in-depth instructions, all of the real-time footage, details of all of the materials I'll be using, sketch outlines, and the reference photo. Some of the drawings are reasonably quick and I have some much longer, more detailed drawings as well. Check out the link in the description. All right, so let's get started drawing this gnome. So I want to start here in the way that I always do by building up the base layers. My main goal here is to put something down on the paper. I want to get everything marked out. So I can start off by drawing in all of the red areas, but actually I'm not going to do this with the red pencil. I want to be doing this with the pink pencil because this is the lightest colour I can see in the area. When I look at the gnome, some of the areas that have light shining on them, it's more like a pink rather than a red, and that's why I picked this colour. And what I want to be doing is particularly putting this down as smooth as possible, suppressing so really nice and lightly. And I want to try get it as smooth as possible so I can work in little circular motions rather than just kind of scribbling back and forth. And all I'm doing is literally marking this pink everywhere where it's going to be red. Once I'm happy that I've got that marked in, I can then move on to the other area. So I want to work through each individual area, marking down the lightest color in each. So on the gnome's nose, this needs to be a very light pink, a, a slightly different pink, more of a skin color pink. So I can once again put down a very light covering of this color, still working in the same way. I'm still pressing lightly and I'm still working in those circular motions. You'll see that I'm holding the pencil pretty far back and that is because it literally stops me from being able to press too hard. I can then put down the lightest color I can see on the beard area. So even though the gnome's beard is white or we think of it as white, it's not actually white. When you really look at it, the lightest color in the beard area is more like a very light gray. So I'm going to use this very light cold gray to just block in everywhere where the beard is going to be. And then I've got something down on most of the name already. As you can see, it's very quick, very rough and ready, but I just want to begin to get my bearings. From here, I want to gradually work from the lighter colors towards the darker colors. So I can move on now to a pretty vibrant and reasonably light red and start putting this anywhere that doesn't need to be exceptionally light. So I still want to be going about this in the same way as I did before. I still want to be pressing nice and lightly. That is the whole key to building up with color pencil is pressing lightly so you can get a lot of the color pencil down. But with this pencil at this point, I'm not gonna worry too much about marking in all of the individual shapes. I can do that with a slightly darker color. So once I'm happy that I've made some of the red areas a little bit darker, I want to begin mapping out a bit clearer the beard. So the beard section has quite a kind of fluffy texture that I'm going to need to build. And it also, although it's mostly quite light, there are some areas of particular shadows. You can see kind of darker shadowed lines going through the beard at some places. You can see some darker shadowed lines going through the beard in some places. So I want to be marking that out. What I'm doing here is I'm going back to that very light gray that I used for the base layer. And I'm just beginning to map in both the texture and the general direction of the hairs of the beard. So I've got a really nice and sharp pencil that is so, so important. And I'm just brushing it against the paper back and forth to begin building up a kind of flicky texture. Now, as I say, I am very much focusing on the direction of the different hairs in the beard. It's not necessarily going in the direction you would think. And it's so important that I do frequently sharpen my pencil. Otherwise, I find that you just end up with really thick lines and it ends up looking really scratchy. So once I'm happy with the lightest gray, I'm then gonna move on and map it out a little bit clearer. This is still a cold gray, but it's a slightly darker cold gray. Once again, a really sharp pencil, and I'm just going back over 
all of those lines that I marked in a second ago still really mapping out the direction but it is a bit easier now because I've got a little bit of an idea from what I did with that lighter pencil. So once I've gone over the whole of the beard area I've got something a little bit clearer around here. An area that I currently have nothing in is the body of the gnome. So I want to get some sort of base layer down on that body. So I can move on to the black pencil. And once again, I want to be pressing really lightly. That's why it's not really looking like a black. It's looking more like a gray. I want to be making flicking motions once again, but this time flicking up into the beard so that I don't have a really sharp and abrupt edge around the beard. And then once I've got the line of the edge of the beard looking nice and tidy, I can then just shade around the body area. And that's making the gnome look much, much better. So you can see that quite quickly, we've really got it mapped in even more thoroughly. It's becoming a lot clearer what needs to go where. So from here, I can move on to a slightly darker red. And once again, be putting this in all of the areas that are this dark red or darker. So I can map in all of the different lumps and bumps that are on the hat. And that's gonna make my life a lot easier as I get towards the darker colors. From here, I can move on to uh, Burnt Sienna. This is a kind of reddish brown. I like to use this as a particularly dark red. And you can see that I'm just bit by bit building up all of these red areas. It's gradually building up the contrast of the drawing. And I feel like every time that I add an extra color, it makes it more apparent other areas that I need to add to. So now that I've added in this burnt sienna, it becomes clearer that I need to add in also another darker brown. So I can do that with the walnut brown, which is the darkest brown that I've got in my set. And now that I've added that in, it's really showing how the beard needs to be made a lot darker, particularly around the edge, around the body. It just looks way too muted. It's kind of hard to see where the edge of the beard is. So I can go back around where I put all of this black in a second ago, building up all of the flicking motions and then adding some nice smooth circular motions around the edge. And once I've done that, I think that the beard itself just looks way too light, way too muted. So I can go back over the beard with that cold, slightly darker gray to continue building up all of the areas that I did before. You'll see that even though I'm putting quite a dark gray and building up a reasonable amount of it, it does still look like a white beard. In fact, it makes a lot more sense now than it did a second ago before I added in all of this extra gray. And just like before, it is far easier now to go back over it because I have already mapped out all of the different directions of the hair. So it's just much clearer to see what needs to go where. And then once I've done that, I want to move on to the darkest color in my set, which is once again the black. But this time, now that it's got some base layers underneath it, so not only the black layer that I added in at the beginning, but also that brown that we just built up is now looking darker and far richer. And maybe I'm pressing a tiny bit harder, but not a huge amount. Now, before I move on from this, I can also use the black to just add in some small details, still very lightly on this section. I want to be maybe making some of the shadows a bit more prominent on the beard, but I don't want to create really harsh lines. And then after building up a little bit of color on the nose, because it's looking a bit too plain at this point, really just building up a mixture of that reddish brown that I used on the hat, particularly at the bottom. And also I want to add some gray, some of the same gray that I used for the beard over the top here as well, just because those are the colors that I can see in the reference. But generally speaking, I wanna focus on adding this to the bottom of the nose because the top of the nose is so light. Then at this point, I just need to focus on really brightening up the red. So I can go back through those same colors that I used before, but this time going from the darker colors and working my way towards the lighter colors. So starting off here with the very dark walnut brown again, and just redefining a lot of the shadows, really making it look as dark as it does on the reference before going back to the burnt sienna using this to fill in all of the areas that I want to look really dark red. And then I can go back to the dark red color and I'm going over both the dark brown, the reddish brown and any areas that need to be this not too dark red. And you can see that it just slightly adjusts the color of the dark brown to make it look like an extremely dark red. I think it just creates an extra kind of richness. Once I've done that, I can move on to the brighter red. 
and really be building up this color a little bit more before I want to move on to the lightest color that I used right at the very beginning. So this is that quite bright pink that I can use to go over the patch of light on the left hand side up here. So now I'm generally happy with how the gnome is looking at this point. The last thing I want to do is just go back to the red and really brighten up the hat one last time. To me, this drawing is all about mostly the hat and how bright it is, as well as the detail of that beard. But that is it. So that is how I went about drawing this Christmassy gnome. Now don't forget, if you would like to draw this with me in a lot more detail, it is available on my Patreon. I do really enjoy drawing Christmas drawings. And if you would like to see how I go about drawing a Christmas tree, check out this video here. Happy drawing guys, and I'll see you in the next one.